Here's an omelet so quick and easy, I'm gonna show it to you in real time. Zero edits. It'll take like two minutes. Crack an egg, doesn't matter if it's particularly fresh or not. Give it a tiny pinch of salt and then a little splash of milk or water, doesn't matter either way. We're just looking to loosen up the egg a bit. With thick omelets, you add some liquid so the curd steams up a bit and gets real fluffy. In contrast, this is gonna be a paper-thin omelet, so the water or the milk is there to help it spread out super smooth and thin in the pan. For that same reason, I want to beat this very smooth. And if you have time, this comes out even better if you let the beaten egg sit with the salt in it for like 15 minutes. You get an even smoother surface that way. And as soon as the camera is able to autofocus on that dark colored nonstick pan, you will see that my butter is fizzing really gently. The heat is on like medium low and in goes the egg. Now with normal French omelet technique, you stir the egg in the pan until it starts to form a solid curd. With this, there will be no stirring at all. Just tip the pan around, let gravity spread that in a totally uniform thin curd. You can also let the really soupy egg run up into the bare rim of the pan. It'll cook real fast there. It's looking pretty good. If you want to grate on some cheese, now is the time, though that's totally optional. I'm using Gouda, but you know, pretty much any cheese will work. Just keep it restricted to one half of the egg surface, ideally the half that's closest to your body, because what we're gonna do now is drape that other half over. I'm waiting until it looks just solid enough to grab and flip. And yes, I'm gonna grab it with my fingers. I'm not gonna burn myself. The heat was low already, and, and now I've actually turned it off. I just think using my fingers is way easier than trying to flip the omelet in the air or nudge it around with a spatula. And if it tears a little as you're draping it, no worries, because now we fold it over on itself again, corner to corner. And I think this triangular shape actually is much more attractive than the traditional long French shape. Move the camera on over, you won't have to worry about that. I was gonna slide that out, but then I remembered that I want the outer curve to run parallel with the curve of the plate, pointy end in the middle. You have a little salad with that. That's just baby spinach and sliced shallots with vinegar, olive oil, a little salt and pepper. Yeah, I smashed the corner of the omelet with my fat finger. Put that milk away, get yourself a glass of wine, and boom, a fancy lady lunch if ever there was one. I like fancy lady food. I'm gonna show you some ways of building on this concept, stronger flavors, more substantial ingredients, and we'll see if it can work with a two egg omelet, but the advantage of doing it single egg is how incredibly thin and delicate those layers are. It's like a croissant made of egg instead of wheat, certainly healthier for me in that respect. But of course, I don't always have the motor skills for eggs first thing in the morning, which is why I often reach instead for the sponsor of this video, Magic Spoon Cereal. This is also much better for my dietary goals than a grain-based breakfast. It has no grain at all. The primary structure of these little O's is provided by milk protein. It's a high-protein, low-calorie, grain-free cereal. This one has zero grams of sugar, four grams net carbs, 13 grams of protein. And the best part? Magic Spoon does not taste like the box from whence it came. It tastes like a sugar bomb kid cereal. These are three are probably my favorite, the cookies and cream, cinnamon and maple waffle, but they got cocoa, blueberry, fruity. You can assemble your own variety box. Brits, they're shipping this across the pond now, Canada too. Hit my link in the description and use code Ragusia for $5 off your variety box, magicspoon.com slash Ragusia. Tell them Ragusia sent you and you'll save five bucks. Money back guarantee if you don't love it. Thank you, Magic Spoon. Alrighty, let's do this again with editing this time. Beat an egg with a small pinch of salt and maybe a teaspoon or two of milk or water, nice and smooth. Some butter in a nonstick pan. That's fizzing a little too aggressively for me. The lower the heat, the fewer steam bubbles you get and therefore the smoother the surface of your omelet. Pour in the egg and oops, you can see that I didn't do such a good job of beating that one. I've got some chunks of yolk in there. As soon as I've got it laid out nice and smooth, I will reach for one single Brussels sprout. When I want a little bit of cabbage type vegetable, I buy one of these because they're very small and sold in bulk so I can buy a single Brussels sprout and I'm grating that on. Pieces this small will cook just fine in the 20 remaining seconds this is going to be in the pan. Grate on a little cheese if you want. Wait until it's just solid enough to grab and fold. Again, no worries if you tear it because now we fold corner to corner. And that one came out even nicer, probably because I got my heat even lower. Side salad engage, and then check how pretty this is on the inside. 
Obviously, you could do the same thing with herbs, but they're more delicate and more likely to be overcooked and browning by the time you eat. These Brussels shavings are still really bright, color and flavor-wise. They provide a nice, zesty, vegetal note. Love those paper-thin layers. But say you want a much more substantial filling. I'll fillet off a couple sides of bell pepper, cut those in half, and then slice thin. With a thin food, everything you put inside also has to be really thin, or it's going to be lumpy. Likewise, the mushrooms here I'll slice pretty thin, and I've got some green onions, roots off slice thin. With a non-stick pan, you can start mushrooms totally dry, no oil. They have some natural fat inside them anyway, and this allows you to get them cooking and squeezing out their water before you start filling them up with oil, if that's a thing you're trying to minimize. I'll put the peppers in with my olive oil. I just like to get my mushrooms really brown, which is why I gave them a head start. When the peppers are almost as soft as I want them, in go the onions, stir in a pinch of salt and pepper, and I'll dump that out onto a plate. That's enough filling for like four omelets. Crack in our egg, pinch of salt, milk, beat smooth, wipe out the pan before cooking that. And when it's all spread even, I'll place my fillings pretty deliberately. I don't want big lumps throwing off the cooking. This is very much like topping a pizza, IMHO. Cheese on top. Let's see, is this ready to fold yet? You can kind of poke at it to find out. Drape that on over, and I think that browning on top is left over from the fillings we cooked in there. Fold her again, and then yeah, a mushroom poked a little hole in the top. No one cares, I'm sure. And that works pretty well, though I wish I'd sliced my peppers even thinner. So now I'm sure you're wondering, what if I want more food? Could the same technique work with a two-egg omelet? Well, let's find out. Gotta remember to double my salt and my milk this time, and I think the key to making this work will be very low heat, like the butter is not even foaming. This way, when we pour the egg in, the upper regions will have time to cook through before the part touching the pan gets overcooked. Again, this is why you stir a traditional French omelet when the egg first goes in, to spread the heat through the whole mass. We're not doing that. As soon as I've got a reasonably solid bed, I can start laying in my fillings, more this time because the whole thing is going to be thicker. Instead of Gouda, I'm going to crumble on some feta cheese this time. Not my favorite thing in the world, but I understand millions of people disagree with me and they love this stuff. And keeping with the Greek theme, I'll put on some chopped fresh dill. This feels solid enough to grab and flip, and once folded, I can let this whole thing sit in the pan for another 30 seconds to kind of steam through. If I want the egg cooked through, maybe I don't. I love eggs that are still a little gooey inside. And look how silky smooth the surface of that is from the ultra low heat. It looks more like a crepe than an omelet because this is exactly how. How you cook crepes. A little more dill on that. Hey, did I just reuse the same handful of salad for each of these shoots? You'll never know. It's crazy that this is simultaneously easier than a French omelet and more schmancy than a French omelet. I'm doing the no-stir method from now on. <laughs> 